the beginning of the conflict, the reconnaissance battalion of a Panzer division consisted of a battalion HQ company, two armored reconnaissance squadrons, a motorcycle squadron, a heavy squadron. Each armored reconnaissance squadron consisted of a squadron HQ containing a radio command vehicle equipped to transmit tactical information to command via coded Morse code, servicing two light platoons and one heavy platoon of six heavy reconnaissance vehicles. The motorcycle machine gun squadron typically employed BMW or Zindap made sidecar mounts and consisted of squadron HQ, three rifle troops, each of three sections armed with two MG-34s and one light mortar as integral support weapons. The heavy squadron contained light infantry gun troop equipped with two towed 75mm light infantry guns, a tank hunter troop with three towed 37mm anti-tank guns. Often an artillery observer would accompany the patrol so that in an emergency situation supporting artillery fire can be brought in. The purpose of the motorcycle machine gun squadron and the heavy squadron was that of supporting troop, help the passage of the armored car patrol through the enemy's defended zone by suppression with a high volume of fire. Once through, the cars completed their missions alone. As additional half-tracks become available, Recognized as a safer method for deploying riflemen to the front, the battalion's motorcycle element was steadily reduced. The arrival of the Sonderkraftfahrzeug so Special Purpose Vehicle 234 also meant that the towed weapon troops of the heavy company could also be phased out. So by March of 1943, a large proportion of the squadrons were almost entirely made up of the Sonderkraftfahrzeug 231 series armored cars and combined with the second squadron fielding only Sonderkraftfahrzeug 250 half-tracks. Their employment followed the same principles until the middle of the war. One officer recalls. Having been given a task by the division, the commanding officer would dispatch several troops along the most important axis and lead them personally. Behind them, the squadron moved up with further troops. As an officer commanding a section of two eight-wheeled cars, I carried out tasks given to me directly by the commanding officer. I was given a distant objective perhaps 20 to 40 kilometers into enemy territory and without consideration of neighboring reconnaissance sections had to reach this using my own initiative. Enemy forces had to be reported and, if possible, circumvented without detection so that we could penetrate deep into their rear areas. Often we had not reached our objective by nightfall and remained as stationary observers on suitable features until daybreak. On reaching the objective, we were either ordered to return to our unit or we were relieved by another reconnaissance unit that had followed us up. At first, one had to overcome and become used to a feeling of loneliness, of being all alone in enemy territory without being able to rely on outside help. With increasing experience, one's self-confidence grew. Apart from which, such independent missions were particularly attractive to a young cavalry officer in that one was not pressed into a restrictive framework with one's superiors and neighbors. A reconnaissance leader must be a good observer and heaven knows for knowing where he might run into the enemy. Mostly the cars were well camouflaged and used all available natural covers, following each other with the last car covering the rear. On features where a good field of vision was offered, 
one halted and made a detailed observation. If no enemy were seen, then the first car went on to the next observation point. When it arrived safely, the next car called forward. The best patrol I had were those with clean guns. Even worse fight targets were only reported and not engaged. That is the business of others. A troop leader with a tendency to fight is useless for reconnaissance purposes since he is soon located by the enemy and chased like a rabbit. A report giving the location of an enemy tank concentration is of more value than shooting glories. Reports were made in Morse code, voice transmissions were used only between vehicles. Every report concerning the enemy's whereabouts and even negative information contained in a periodic situation report helped build up a picture of an overall enemy situation. From early 1943 the war was turning against Germany. The reconnaissance battalions were reassigned to perform different type of tasks. They were used to screen the divisional flanks and rear guard against observation by the enemy's reconnaissance units and to report on the enemy's line of attack as they developed. From late 1943 their role changed again. Germany went on defensive on all fronts. There was little need for intelligence acquisition but rather for a heavily armored mobile combat unit as a division reserve and counter-attack force.